Hello everyone, this is Chauser here and welcome to the first episode of OPTC 101. And in this episode we'll be covering chain buffs. And that includes chain lock, chain boost, chain set and chain multiplier. Okay, but first things first. So the way I've made this video the way I've done, like a PowerPoint, is two reasons mainly. First, I want to keep the content focused. We'll talk about something. I'll show some videos about that. Then we move into the next thing. And we have a steady pace. The second one is production value. But like, let's face it, making a PowerPoint is something we've all done. We know how it works. We don't have to do. We don't. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. So by keeping it pretty basic like this and focusing more on the content than how pretty it looks, I can make these videos more often. Okay, but with that out of the way, this is what we'll cover in this video. First, we'll talk about all the different types of chain buffs. We'll also talk a little bit. bit about the chain debuffs and for everything I talk about I'll also show some examples and uh, at the very end we'll compare how the different kind of buffs stack against each other okay but before we can talk about anything else we have to talk a little bit about the basics of chain and I won't dwell here long I know many watching know this inside out but basically when you start a chain you always start at a one time damage and that can change no matter what buff you use and if you don't have any buffs or debuffs applied related to chain your your chain multiplier will increase by 0.1 for every great and 0.3 for every perfect and as long as you hit good, great and perfect, you can keep the chain going and you also need to hit one of those to initiate the chain. And if you do a miss or you don't attack at all, you will go back to the one times multiplier if you attack again. And if you do the perfect chain with no buffs or debuffs and hit all perfects, the final unit you attack with will have a 2.5 multiplier applied so that's the basics first unit is one times damage then you try to hit all perfects and the last unit will do 2.5 times damage okay so let's talk about our first chain buff and that's the chain lock and chain lock is pretty self-explanatory you lock the chain to a certain amount like 2.5 times at the moment in the game we can go up to 3.5 times like big mom in the image and what this does is you can let five units on the team hit with the sh same chain modifier so if you do a 2.5 chain lock first you initiate the chain remember first one is always one times damage you hit a good greater perfect you have a chain going and the hits after that will all have the same chain so if you use a 25 times chain lock and start a chain, all units will hit that a 25 times damage multiplier. I hope that makes sense. Another interesting part about chain lock is that it counts as a debuff and in content it's often applied as a debuff and it's a pretty annoying debuff to be deal with. I'm going to show a video about that later. And if there are any type of chain multiplier applied, like a chain boost, like a chain coefficient reduction, which we we'll talk about later, then chain uh, chain lock. I see I wrote over right, which is kind of incorrect, but it will take precedence. Chain lock will always count if it's applied over other chain buffs. And they also listed some common units there, some free to play, some legends, some among one of them, Shane's crew, often regarded as one of the best in the game. Okay, but let's go on to the videos. And I made 
a special team here. This is just a team to showcase with and without Shane Locke. And both teams, both clips I'll show, use the exact same team. So let's watch the video. This is with no chain lock applied. And we come in here to the second stage of the Whitebeard Garb Challenge. And we're going to use all our specials. Swap Miyok Perona for the conditional. We have Weevil to remove the attack down, get some attack. Frankie to give a or boost for Sai Hina for the color affinity. So we're about to do some big damage here. And I'm going to pause here. Oh, it went to the beginning. It's fine. First time I do this, there are going to be some hiccups. But yeah, I just want to say that the reason the pig is here, and I hit it in first, is because, as I mentioned, you have to initiate the chain. You have to hit a good, great, or perfect to get the chain lock later. And since we want to compare with and without, both videos will be pig hit a perfect, and then me Yok Perona hit a perfect. So let's see what happens. Uh, it's being a bit finicky. Okay, here we go. Okay, pig hits perfect. And now Miyok and Perona is a perfect for a nice 8 million damage or so. And let's see what's happened with chain lock. And the chain lock we are applying here, like as you can see, it's the same team. We are using the same specials. The only difference is that Mihawk Perona has the V1 Sora support, which is actually kind of amazing. It applies a chain lock. So you get a free chain lock when using the special for two turns even. So it has a lot of uses. So that's the only difference here. So let's activate all specials again and we'll see what happens. We did 8 million last time. So we start with the pig, hit the perfect with the pig, and then Miyok and Perona. And this time we do uh, 50 million damage or so, 15 and a half, so almost twice the damage. So that's a good example to show that chain lock is a big deal. And you have to remember too that I can continue attacking uh, after. Like in this clip I just showcase one unit attacking, but I can attack with Weevil. Frankie and all the others, and they've lost all have the 2.5 times same blocks. So all units will do quite a bit of damage. And I have one final clip here from a Kizuna team I did, and this is to show that chain lock is indeed a debuff. As you can see here in this clip, I used the chain screw special, which is a three turn chain lock against the mini boss. So it gets carried over to the next stage. And this carrot, people might remember her, which, which was quite annoying. She applies some weak buffs to you that you want to remove. So we use Big Mom to remove them. And as you noted there, they disappeared, but the chain lock remains. So even if the enemy removes buffs, or if you remove your own buffs, the chain lock is still there. Okay, and with that we're done talking about chain lock, and what we're talking about next will be like two different camps, like we had chain lock first, and now we'll have all the other chain stuff that can interact with each other, and chain lock is all by itself. But first we have chain boost, and I know a lot of, some people might read the first point here and be like, uh, that's not correct, and I just want to say that I guess it's not technically correct, but I don't want to complicate things. Like when you read about chains online, it often ends up with formulas, like exp explain exactly how things works. And I want to let the viewers of this video know what they need to know. And what they need to know about, about chain boost is that once you initiate a chain, you hit a good, great or perfect, your next hit will have its chain at a higher value. So if you have say a 0.03 chain boost, if you get a perfect with your first hit normally, next hit would be 1.3 times damage. Now it instead will be 1.6 times damage. Which is why to keep it easy to understand, just remember 
the base chain starts at a higher value once you initiate this chain. And it's after that, it still increases like normal when hitting good, great, or perfect. Uh, the big, big thing about chain boost is that it gets hindered by chain coefficient reduction, which is the chain debuff. And if a chain lock is applied, it has no effect. And you might think that chain lock sounds a lot better. And often people will prefer to use chain locks, but in certain scenarios, and we'll go deeper into this, but the unit hit and last when using a good chain boost usually hits at a higher chain than when you set a chain lock. So the last unit, and maybe the second to last unit, will do more damage, which in some cases might be all you want and need. And we get back to this too, but it can be stacked with chain set and or chain multiplier. And I've listed some common units, including this cracker here, who is still amazing, and I use him a lot. Lot of good units there for him to play too. Okay, let's go into the clips. First, we have a clip without chain boost, and this is the same deal as before. We are back to white beard garb challenge. And we have a team, and this team you'll see a lot. For those with a keen eye and understanding of mechanics and specials, you'll notice that this team has all the chain buffs we'll be talking about from now on. Except maybe one, you'll see how I managed to fit the chain boost in. But yeah, we are going to watch this clip and I'll be using most specials, except for some special ones I'm saving. Okay, so we have Nami Robin here. And this team is set up to showcase chain boost. So Nami and Robin only boost Dex and Psy, but it's a only Psy characters as well. And this means they will be do barely any damage, and it means I can hit with the friend Captain Nami Robin first, then hit all my perfects without doing damage, and then the final Nami Robin will hit that max multiplier. So she did us. We ended up doing a solid four million there. And now we have Wit Shame Boost. And the way I saw this was by putting the free to play Raid Mr. Zero on Nami Robin. It gives a 0.03 Shame Boost. So that's pretty decent for a free to play unit. And we'll see how this goes. We're doing the exact same thing. We're using the same specials. The only difference is that Nami Robin has the Raid Mr. O applied to them. So he has 0.03 to the chain. So after the first Nami Robin is a perfect, the next attack, which will be Wheat Free Law, will be at a 1.6 time chain. And then it goes up by 0.3, every perfect from there, and ends with a 0.28 chain. And we did around 500k damage more, like it's an improvement. You have to remember this wasn't the biggest shame boost. It was just to show the difference between mechanics. Like without it, you do start at 1.3. Here we started at 1.6 and it just keeps going up like normal. Okay, and we're done with shame boost for now. Now we're going to talk about a mechanic that many are probably pretty confused by. Like once people see the guy on the picture they'll know oh it's that thing. And it doesn't really have a very exact accepted name. So see this as my attempt to get chain set commonly accepted as the term. It makes a lot of sense. And uh, I can already see some people face palming at the first one. It's the same thing I wrote for chain boost. And it's just to keep things simple. Base chain starts at a higher value after a chain has been initiated. So you hit the good, great, or perfect, start a chain. And then the next hit will be buffed by the chain set. The difference is that chain set will get into it, but it can get around stuff like chain coefficient reduction and such. But basically, it's the same thing, and it also, yeah, I'll just follow my bullet points, I think. 
But yeah, as I said, not hindered by co- chain confusion reduction. And uh, not made ineffective by chain lock. In reality, chain lock can't be applied if you have a chain set. And like chain lock, it's also a debuff. So it can't be removed. I won't show a clip for it, but it's the same thing as with the chain lock clip I showed before. And so it has a lot of similarities to chain lock. The big difference is that compared to chain lock, the unit hitting last in the chain will hit harder. And bear with me here. Let's say we have a 2.5 times chain lock and a 2.5 times chain set. With a chain lock, every unit, once you start the chain, will hit that 2.5 times. And this, then it, this also means it doesn't matter with order you hit most of the time. You just need to start the chain with something. Everything is for the same multiplier. But with chain set, it starts at 2.5, but then it will go up by the normal 0.03 for every hit. So here it's also important to think about which order you hit, who do you want to hit last with to do most damage. So this also means that in comparable instances, chain set outclasses chain lock. But at the moment the highest chain set is just 2.5 times boost and the highest chain lock is 3.5. But we'll talk a bit more about that later. And like chain boost, this can be stacked with it, and it can also be stacked with chain multiplier, and they can all three be stacked together. And I have a clip for that later. And the only units with chain set right now is We Tree Law and Ray Crocodile. That's literally it. And it's nice that we have a free to play unit with it, because it's a very cool mechanic. Okay, let's get into the clips. We're back with Nami and Robin again, same team. And as you can guess, the unit we, are, we have brought for this is the We Tree Law. So we'll do the same thing as before. And we'll just use the We Tree Law special too. So let's watch. In this clip, Nami and Robin does not have the Mr. Zero support. So there is no shame boost applied. It is just the chain set from We Tree Law. So we're doing all the specials again. We're just adding We Tree Law. So let's see what chain we hit at here. The first is one, of course. What chain does the second hit land on? As you can see there, it's up to a 3.1. Let's watch there. It becomes 2.8 after the first hit, and then it goes up with 0.03 for every hit, like normal. 3.1, 3.4, 3.7, and we end at 4.0. And that was a solid almost 6 million damage, and that's quite a bit more than we saw before. And the next clip, we are going to combine, because they can be combined, I said. The chain boost and chain sets, so this is almost the same clip. The difference here is that Nami and Robin again have the Mr. O support. As you can see there, 0.03 chain boost. So if la last time with just we three low we ended at a 4.0 chain boost, you can already see where we're going this time. We applied a 0.03 chain boost on top of that. So if everything's correct, we should end at the neat 4.3 chain. As you can see there. And we added a solid 400k or so more damage. Not bad. And remember again, 0.03 chain boost is very low. It's nice if you want some extra free damage, but it's not really something you build a team around. There are proper chain boosters that can do like 1.0 chain boost, 1.1 chain boost. And when you start combining those together, it gets really crazy. Okay, but that's it for chain set for now. We are now moving on to chain multiplier. And I'm going to admit before making this video, 
all I really knew myself was that shame multiplier stacks. Like, very ignorantly, you think, oh, it's an extra shame boost you can stack. And I always knew that, like, that doesn't really make any sense, you know? So it was nice to make this video and really read about what it does. And it kind of blew my mind, I have to say. Okay, so basis basics here. Basically, chain increases more than normal with every good, great, and perfect. So with the 1.25 times chain multiplier, and that's the multiplier I didn't choose randomly, both the chain multiplier units we have does that exact buff. The last unit hits with a 3.125 times chain, as opposed to the normal 2.5 times. So that is quite big. Like you do a lot of extra damage after every perfect. And like the other, and like chain boost, it is hindered by chain coefficient reduction and it's made ineffective by chain lock. But it can be stacked with chain boost and or chain set. And we're soon going to see them all three together. And the only units right now that has chain multiplier are Sanji Jads and super type sabo okay so let's watch a clip with this this is the reason we have sanji yachi on the team and he's not going to use his special now he's just here for the swap because his special won't add any damage he just buffs powerhouse and we already have orb and attack boosts from nami robin and weeboy so Sanji Yach is only here to do his swap and showcase his shame multiplier. And you can see there on the screen. It says multi instead of add like normal. And you're soon going to see them right next to each other. So let's see how the chains stack here. As you can see. 1.63. I want to see if that's the first. Yeah, 1.63, then it goes up to 2.0, 2.37, 2.75, 3.12, and it ends there. 3.125. And it does a solid 4.76. So you see, for those that remember, this does more damage than the 0.03 chain boost support. A few hundred K more. And that's kind of big, like you have to remember, in this video it was just a swap. So that just shows that Sanji Judge as a unit is kind of crazy to just be able to swap and get that much extra damage for free. Uh, and now let's get on to the real deal here. This time we're using everything, we're using the 0.03 times chain boost, we're using the chain set from we 3 law we're swapping sand jods for the chain multiplier so let's see how it all comes together as you can see here from the nami robin raid o mr zero for the 0.03 chain boost we're launching every special now that has an effect Swapping there for the chain multiplier, and you can see them next to each other, multi and add, and then there's their chains that next to them, all three together, 3.8, 4.18, 4.55, 4.93, 5 5.3 times multiply for 7.4 million damage. That is significantly higher than we've done before. So yeah, that's just crazy. And for those of you that don't have We 3 Love yet, like you're going to have a lot of fun with him later. Like you can do some real crazy stuff. And I can't wait for more units to get chain set as well. Okay. So let's do a summary. And I want to say right away don't look at this and think, wow, chain lock is so much better. Like, nah. There's a lot of difference, like Miyok and Prona were Psy and hitting against an int unit. They also had color affinity, blah, 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 blah. Like, I didn't 
do this to do an accurate analysis between them. I wanted to compare chain lock with and without. I want to com compare all the different types of chain buffs on the right side. So don't compare chain lock with the others. That's all I want to say. But I'm not going to talk a lot about chain lock. It should be obvious here how good it can be. Just one V1 source support in this time and damage just instantly doubled. Like it's very valuable, it's very easy to use. And then you can see the difference between the various kinds of chain boosts I used. And again, remember, it was just a 0.03 time chain boost. It's kind of low. Damage doesn't add up much. But still, you have to remember with all together there. 5.3 times. Like remove the chain multiplier and instead take a better chain boost. Like Cracker, for example. We want Snake Man, something like that. And you are going to hit higher numbers than that 5.3. So it's kind of crazy, actually. Okay, so this I mostly brought as a reference so people can check this if they want. Okay, so now when we go going through both chain lock and the various chain buffs, I just wanted to do a pros for each of them. And before we start with chain lock, the good thing with this is that again, uh, I have a hard time coming up with the right word, but it takes precedence. Chain lock takes precedent over all types of chain boost, the chain coefficient reduction, everything. Chain lock, when it's applied, it's applied, it's what matters, nothing else matters. It's rarely removed. We've had like one key scenario where chain lock is removed, otherwise, you're good if it's applied. Like, they don't remove it, it counts as a de debuff. It's also insanely useful that. Aside from the guy starting the chain, all of the five units in the team hit for the same higher damage. Like, of course, then attack stats and affinity and stuff matters, but they will all hit at the same chain. And as I said, it's very easy to use. You use it, you don't have to think about anything. It's like, uh, who do I start the chain with? Maybe I brought the unit with and boosted. Like you can often do that. Just hit with them first, then hit with all other five. It doesn't matter what order. It's very chill. And there's some very good support with it. Like if a unit gets a chain lock support, it, like it instantly gets a lot better. Like there is this Kisuna rear recruit Akainu, who like makes every Kisaru and Aokiji unit so much better, like it's insane. Like it's like, I don't like to talk about tires, but like all of them go up a tire instantly, basically. And then I've written, you can save time since you reach higher damage much faster, yeah. Like the Miyok and Perona clip, like I didn't have to hit with all the units to get higher damage, I just initiated the chain, then I do a lot of damage next hit, and I'm a bit cool with that hit. Instead of having to hit six, six perfects. So yeah, chain lock is very useful. And now if we go move on to the chain boost, chain set and chain multiplier. And I say it again, chain set is basically a buff chain lock, but it's rarer. And we don't have anything higher than 2.5 times, but I want to say that a 2.5 times chain set is arguably better than a 3.5 times chain lock. Personal I think it's better. Just putting it out there. And chain boost the multiplier. They're great if you just need a bit extra damage. But of course they can struggle with chain debuffs. And the units hitting last with a boost through chain will hit harder than with the chain lock. And that's of course if there are a comparably strong units with it, like a 0.1 chain buff versus a three times chain lock, stuff like that. Like, the last unit will hit a lot harder. And it can matter sometimes, like if you do a rainbow team with like Jerma or Arlong or something and you face a Dex unit, you want the strength unit to do more damage. So it's very good for stuff like that. And then of course, as you saw in this last clip, like once you start combining them, compi uh, combining them like chain lock can't match the power of the other chain buffs going together and combining. And it's often hard to fit chain multiplier here. Like 
Super Sabo is the big uh, um, man left out. Like, he can easily fit a lot of these. Like, it's kind of iffy since V3 Law isn't boosted by Sabo, but I jokingly said many times that V3 Law is the best uh, Super Sabo sub, despite V3 Law doing no damage on him. It's just that V3 Law just propels the damage for Super Sabo team extraordinarily. Okay, that's all I have to say about that. So let's talk a little. Going to talk a lot about. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about like uh, uh, exactly how it works, like. I don't really know exactly how it works. I know the chain lowers slower at a worse rate, but you don't really need to know because if a chain coefficient reduction is applied, you know you have to remove it or use a chain locker, or you can also use a chain set. So that's really all you need to know. And of course, the difference is if you use a chain captain because then you just have to remove it or you usually want to barely any damage and that's why a unit like V2 Sandy as a captain can remove 10 turns of it which is, makes him a bit more useful and I'll talk about chain caps more in a different video for sure and now I have a quick quick showcase of chain coefficient reduction this is from Chaos Kolo Komurasaki and when you defeat Robin on stage 4 she does apply 10 turns of chain coefficient reduction is the downward blue arrow you see there so we need to have some chain lock here or remove it but as you can see we have Shang's crew and he, you'll often use him when you need to remove chain lock and this content was made for him so and that croc support there was not to raid Mr. Zero, by the way. So now we'll use the shanks, we apply the chain lock. And now we just need to start the chain and every hit after is at a 3.5 times chain lock. So after that it's easily cleared. And we move on to the next clip. And the next clip is from a Garp challenge, a proper team against Whitebeard I did. And I just wanted to show a bit how you can play around negative chain buffs. In this case, it's a negative chain lock. Like this stage 6 against Whitebeard is pretty famous. Like it applies a lot of bad stuff. It applies 3 turns of paralysis, 3 turns of attack down, 3 turns of chain lock. And you might have seen a koala there and that koala is the koala that removes two turns of chain lock or chain coefficient reduction. So as you see, it's just one turn left, which we can stall out with this team. So I don't hit anything. I just get the one orb with koala. And now this turn we can just burst. All the buffs are gone. And we don't need to worry. So this team isn't that good for Garp anymore. It was good back when uh, we could combine like we needed to do color and class. So this is a free spirit strength team. It was fun to make but uh, not good to use anymore. Okay, that's that with it. And I said everything I want to say about normal chain buffs and chain debuffs. So let's look a bit at the future. And we have... What about Sugar? The upcoming legendary Sugar. And I'll just focus on her chain buff stuff. She has a lot more than that going on, crazily enough, because the chain buff stuff in itself is pretty damn crazy. Okay, so basically, when Sugar attacks, and I'm not going to say hit a perfect, because Sugar always hit a, hits a perfect, the chain is increased by 0.07 per attack instead of the normal 0.03 with a perfect. 
So you can already imagine that the damage is going to get insane with her. And yeah, the toy mechanic. You become a toy bear. You don't have to worry about perfect, you always hit perfect. And you can stack it with all the other stuff. We can stack with chain boost, chain set, chain multiplier. It's kind of crazy. We're going to watch a bit, a clip of that in a bit. And if you look at YouTube, you can find even more crazy, crazy clips like the one I'm going to show you. And if you're good at math, you're free to try and calc out the max possible chain. I don't feel like it, but yeah, you can do some crazy stuff with her. And yeah, I have a clip here from Subconsi. Definitely go and sub him. I leave a, this clip and the link to his channel in the, in the description. And let's take a look. And this is one of the wits he often makes where he just showcases damage. Like this isn't a good team to beat content. It just to show how much damage you can do. And this team is kind of cool because you see Lufusaur and Shane Lock. Uh, they don't go well together, but uh, Kingdom on here removes the Shane Lock, so it's gone. So you just get the high ore boost instead. And we got the Shane set from Law. We have Shane boost from. Sora and Sunny support. And now we have all the buffs needed. It's just Sugar left. Who increases the chain by a lot. So let's see how this goes. And the chain ends at a whopping 6 times 7. Like, this is stuff only. Basically only Sugar can do like maybe Super Sub can go up to different chains but he won't hit as hard as Sugar does when she bursts like this is crazy damage. So yeah, check out Sub Subconsi, it's great. And with that, this video is done. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll be back in the future.